Hi, so in this video I'm going to talk about hybridization of the orbitals. So for orbital hybridization, what you need to do is look at the central atom, or the atom that you want to assign the hybridization to, and think about how many pairs are made, how many electrons are involved in sigma bonds and lone pairs. So we can call these effective pairs, just to make this simple to discuss. So when you're looking at an atom, sigma bonds So sigma bonds are your single bonds. So they would just look like single bonds. And you've got your lone pairs. Um, so they will be counted. So counting those up and seeing what number you end up with. And you can call them affected pairs or EPs. And if you have one, the hybridation would be S. If you have two, it would be SP. Three would be SP2. 4 would be sp3. Can you see the pattern? I'm adding an extra orbital every time. So 5, I need to add another one, so it's going to be dsp3. So we write the lowercase d at the front. And 6 would be d2sp3. So that's kind of a little summary of how we do it. So looking at the number of effective pair, and then you can go the high hybrid orbital. So obviously the S isn't a hybrid, that's just the normal one. So if you've got one bond or one lone pair, it won't need to be hybridized. But if you've got more than one, you start hybridization occurring. So let's look at an example where we have carbon single bonded to, let's just call them X, Y, Z, and um, A. So I've got carbon that's got one, two, three, four single bonds, or sigma bonds are single bonds and they're effective pairs, so I've got four. So that would be an sp3 hybridized structure. If I've got water, so water's got two lone pairs on the oxygen, two bonding hydrogens. So we've got one lone pair, I'll put a circle around it so you can see it. Two lone pairs and two bonding. So I've got one, two, three, four effective pairs again. So sp3. Let's have a look at an example where I've got a carbon that's triple bonded to another carbon. And let's say there's two hydrogens. So looking in at this carbon here, so it's got one sigma bond one, two pi bonds. So it's got one sigma, two pi bonds. And then there's another sigma there. So it's two sigma, two pi. Now remember, I'm only looking at the sigma bonds. So it's only two effective pairs. It would have an sp hybridization on that carbon. So let's have a go at another example. Let's look at SF6. Okay, so SF6, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six sigma bonds. So we would be going with D2SP3. So it sounds like a hard concept, but it's actually extremely easy. So counting sigma bonds, counting the lone pairs, classify them as effective pairs that you're going to be counting, find out how many you've got, and then go across on the table. The way I built this table was I started with it one S orbital, I added in a P, added in another P, three P's, used up all my P's, then I brought in my D and another D, and I keep going. So it's fairly easy to reproduce, um, and that's how we do hybridization. So notice that the triple bond here still had SP because it's that sig sigma bond, that single bond that SP hybridizes, and those two pi bonds will be in the p orbitals and they're unhybridized. So in having sp, we've left two p's available for those extra ones. So it kind of all ties in and makes sense and you can look at it from a very simplistic point of view like we have today or you can take that into a deeper understanding. So hopefully you can achieve this deeper understanding but start off with simple and make sure you get the foundations first. Thank you.